producer of Hockey Night in Canada, the co-host of the Bob McCowan podcast. It's our pleasure to welcome John Shannon back to the program. How are you doing? Oh, are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's the fourth day of Christmas. Absolutely. Uh, and, and we'll get into uh, some of these series and some of these games and the ratings in a second. But first, we are a Canucks show. John, what did you make of game one for the Canucks? Well, uh, we knew Nashville was going to be tough. They were tough. Uh, they still will be tough. Uh, but I, I think if the Canucks continue to play their game, they'll uh, they'll win this going away. I, I really do. I, I just I see the depth of the Canucks come through at the right time. Uh, it's great to see Elias Lindholm play better. Uh, and it, it, the, the magic elixir, boys, seems to be we'll play with Garland and Joshua and you're going to be great. That's mm-hmm. true. The, the only thing... Yeah. The only thing that could change for the Predators, and, and for the most part, I agree with your assessment there. I like. I don't know that the, the skaters can do much different for the Preds than what they did. I think Cyrus can be better. That's that to me. That's the one thing that that could save the Preds in in a in a given game. Yeah, I, I, you know what? It, it's been a long season for UC Cyrus. Yeah, it has. a long it, season. People get tired, uh, and this is where. And this is not a criticism of him at all because he's been amazing. This is where big goaltenders can take advantage of situations. And UC Saros is not a big goaltender. There is room to shoot on him. And you know darn well that Rick Tockett and his staff have found that. And I think that that's a f- big factor in this game. You're yeah, right. In the event of fatigue, blocker. just sheer right. size sheer is going to save you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, the position makes you a physical barrier between the scoring instrument and the scoring <laughs> yeah, zone. So yeah. size does. It, it, but size that's, by does. the way, that sounds like physics, Matt. I was never well, good at physics. I mean, honestly, and I'm you're talking to someone who's got great hand science and no more, John, but I, I do understand that, you know, mass in front of a target, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it's pretty simple at the end yeah. of the day. Hey, what did it mean to you as a British Columbian, John, pride of Oliver, uh, to look upon the scenes in Vancouver here on Sunday for the first playoff game, oh. first Stanley Cup playoff game in nine years. Quite honestly, chills. You know, um, there is a time you're still a Canuck fan. There is a time you uh, harken back to days of Bobby Schmatz and Tony Tanti and Richard Brodeur. Um, you know, Kirk McLean, although I was long gone by the time Kirk was the, the star of the show. Uh, I know how good a sports town Vancouver is. And I know how passionate sports fans are in the province. That was special. That truly was special. John, you uh, told us the story last week about handing out uh, towels being part of <laughs> yeah. the uh, infancy, yeah. the birth of towel power here Yeah, uh, back in, uh, back in 1982. Was that your first like big break? How much had you no. done before no. that? Before that, well, I uh, listen. I was, you know, I'm I'm an old man now, but I think people will find it hard to believe I was a child prodigy. Uh, I produced the Stanley Cup final at the age of 22. Uh, really? wow. in, in, in 1980, um, with the, and it was a great honor to do it with the voice Jim Robson calling Bob Nystrom's overtime goal and. At the Coliseum, uh, Bob Nystrom has won the Stanley Cup. And uh, and so that was my first Stanley Cup final, was in 1980. And I basically went on a 35-year run at that point, Matty, one way or the other, of getting to the dance. Uh, but 82 was really something spectacular for me. And, and every Saturday, in those days, every Saturday that I went to Vancouver was a little extra special. I used to do games all over the country and lots of people would say they viewed games, doing games at the forum and doing games at Maple Leaf Gardens were the, the, the paramount. But to me, going to the Coliseum and doing a five o'clock game on a Saturday night was magic to me. Why do we, why do we still get chills every year in the opening week of the Stanley cup final? Like we, we see it every year and every year it takes our breath away. And, and I, I, I can appreciate it across the country. Uh, you know, not, not even being a fan of those teams. I'm in awe of the vibe that they, and even some markets in the States are providing oh. that too. And, and, you know, guys like Pat McAfee taking notice of Winnipeg and, and so like, it, it, you know, it's uh, every year, 
more people get <laughs> awoken to the magic of the Stanley Cup playoffs. But even us, we we know these Stanley Cup playoffs, John. Why does it take our breath away every single year? By the way, I think we've seen it in all eight cities so far. Yeah, I really do. I think we've seen it in all. I, I mean, last night when 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 the Hurricanes scored those two goals in nine seconds, you would have loved to have been in Raleigh. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when 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 Dallas scored, you would love to have been in Dallas. Um, and I, I I get emotional about this, uh, Blake, but we love the game so much. We and we want people to love the game with us. Uh, and the moment you can put those two things together and have 18,000 people uh, as one voice is just something that you cannot beat. I mean, I, as an aside, I saw the same thing at Madison Square Garden last night uh, with the Knicks, and I saw the same thing last night in Denver with the Nuggets. Right, man. Yeah. And it's the yeah. magic of the playoffs, and it's the emotion of the playoffs. And I think that, you know, I'm biased. I think hockey does it re- really well. I'm not saying they do it better than anybody else, but hockey does it so well. And it's one of those times as a Canadian, you say, hey, we do it really, really good. And come and enjoy the party with us. I think that's what it's all about. I truly do. It's funny, John, because my better half went out with her friend to watch game one on Sunday and she came home. She said, I forgot how easy it is to make friends in the Stanley That's Cup true. Playoffs. That's a good point, right? too. Yeah. No, you're all in the same boat. Yeah. It brings people together in ways that other walks of life don't bring people together. It's an expression of community pride in ways that other things aren't uh, expressions of community pride. Pride. And as we talked about on yesterday's show, for Canadians, it's culture. Hockey is culture. It's yeah. identity. Yeah. So just as a, a, a quick story, 2010, of course, Sydney's golden goal at, at Rogers Arena for Canada. I was able to get one ticket for it for my daughter. And I was able to get one ticket for my son to go to Molson Hockey House down the street. Um, and both of them talk about it as if they were both in the arena by the end of it, and both celebrating for that very reason, because of the culture and because the guy beside you and the girl beside you were celebrating with you and you were arm in arm. It was a cool event, and I think that anybody that was at Rogers Arena two nights ago would tell you that they will never forget being there. Back to the Canucks. Um, (laughs) Did they dodge a bullet missing the Vegas Golden Knights? Did we see last night that they can flick a switch? Uh, with their dismantling of the Dallas Stars? Well, you, you know what? The, uh, I, I'm not sure that there, there was a dismantling. What I do, what I did see there was I saw a team uh, that knows how to win. And I think in Dallas, in many ways, because they were the best, you know, one of the best teams in, in hockey, I think they felt the pressure of playing at home. To me, that's going to be a seven-game series, Blake. Uh, it's not as if, you know, because Vegas won the first game, it's going to end quickly. Uh, and I still wouldn't be surprised to see Dallas win the series. Jake Ottinger's got to be a bit better. Uh, I think some of the young guys, Stankhoven, uh, Johnston, Robertson, I think they've got their feet a little wetter and I think they'll be better. Uh, but I'll tell you what, when, when Mark Stone scored a minute, oh 34 into the game, I... You the, the amount of ro- the, uh, of shaking you can feel around the National Hockey League and how to fix oh. it in the CBA. Was I, 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 I honestly comical. think I comical. honestly think that might have been the last straw, John. That he scored that goal <laughs> two minutes in. two minutes into the game. Um, you know, like because even the Dallas fans are booing him. Yes, right. Like you know, that's not exactly the most uh, hockey uh, hockey savvy market, but even though they know what's oh, going fantastic. on down there. That's what the that's what the playoffs are all about. Oh my goodness! Gotta yeah. have a villain. Yeah, sure. I'm waiting. Uh, I'm waiting for Jimmy Nill, who was there at '82, to hold up a towel on a stick. Exactly. And the white flag. Exactly, Jimmy. You go <laughs> out. Be good. You walk into the next GM's meetings with the towel on the stick. <laughs> good. I like that. And you show it to McCrimmon <laughs> and the Vegas. Guy. Um, is uh, is Edmonton going to cruise through the Kings based on what you saw in Game One, John? Uh, I think so. I, I mean, I, I have the uh, the Oilers winning in five. Um, it's so much uh, has to do with 
Uh, Cam Talbot, if he can stay at that at, at any level that keeps him competitive, uh, you know. And if if we see another game like last night, do we see David Riddick? And that I don't think, with all due respect to all the David Riddick fans out there, um, you know, big save Dave is not going to be the answer. Uh, you also saw, you also saw something last night, and it's not a bad thing. Drew Doughty ripping into his teammates. Drew Doughty not very happy about what was going on on the ice, particularly late in the game. And you know they're going to be a little more edgy. But at the same time, if Connor is doing what Connor did last night and Leon's doing that, and my goodness gracious, uh, they're in pretty good shape in Edmonton. But that sharp angle, Leon Dreisaitl well, office. No one in the world has ever had that as their office all on the goal line. And he scores for, there with regularity it's just uh it's unbelievable but they also didn't make life difficult on Stuart skinner which you know he's an untested unproven playoff goaltender they just couldn't get near him to get enough well, shots on goal two, two things on that first of all as skinner's rested he wasn't rested last year mm -hmm. he was exhausted by the playoffs started last year um the, the one thing i would say about the oilers did not play 60 minutes and that will be that will be the reminder in the next 48 hours uh, by Chris Knobloch and Paul Coffey is, hey, boys, you know what? We, we have an opportunity here, but we, we can't let up. And that's exactly what they did. They, you know, if the disallowed goal uh, stands and it's 4-2 and then it's 4-3 before the end of the period, I shudder to think what the difference would be. The Oilers let the Kings off the, off the carpet a couple of times mm -hmm. uh, and, and, just had enough offensive power that they could beat them. But uh, I just don't see anybody catching what Connor, by the way, I, I sent Friedman a note um, last night. I said, you, you, you've got to reinvent the spinorama for Connor McDavid. I mean, how many times can he, he's now put that move into his, That's right. into his, into his, uh, into his CV. And, if he can use that spinorama the way he did last night on a constant basis, then they are going to be even that much more Amazing. powerful. Yeah. Uh, back on the Canucks, Sean, how oh, yeah. how worried about you? Uh, how worried are you about Elias Patterson? And what do you think? Is he going to step up at any point in this series? Uh, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't concerned. Uh, I think there's an expectation he has to reach. I think that this. You know, when you talk about learning curves, there's a learning curve for somebody who is supposed to be the leader. He's still young. This is really good that they can get away with victories without him. But at a certain point, as this team progresses in the playoffs, there's going to be a greater expectation that Elias Pettersson is a better player than what he showed, not, not just in the last uh, playoff game, but I would say the last three weeks of the season. That's the that, that and and we talked about this last week. Yeah. At some point, Pedersen has to be Pedersen, uh, and he can't take a back seat to J.T. Miller, and he can't take a back seat to Elias Lindholm. He has to be a driver at some point. Does he have a gripe about his wingers, quality wingers versus the other two centers? No. Hey, listen, leaders lead, leaders lead, and and that's what he has to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, the one goal in 14 games uh, for Elias Pettersson. Well, into and the here. frustration is, is it's after the contract, right? That's the fr that, yeah. and that's and and he, he knew the moment Vancouver's a tough market. The moment he signs that contract, every fan's expectations rose, and he's got to back it up now. Mm -hmm. uh, still a bit of me that wonders whether you know, that contract became part of the problem coming down the stretch here that be everything he told us all year that wait until the end of the season wait until the end of the season then everybody bullied him to the negotiation table he signs the deal and uh play hasn't been great since so yeah uh, i i do wonder about all that save for another day uh what did you make of uh, the jt miller line against the predators uh you, you know i i Listen, I think that I think playoffs are built for JT Miller. <laughs> and the more that he can be involved, the better he can be involved, the, the, the better for the Canucks it is. Uh, I, I, had, I had very little issue 
with the type of game most of the forwards play, uh, other than, you know, Pedersen. Mm-hmm. Although, I mean, even Pedersen, to me, they play. They played a game to win. I mean, they. This is one where you, it, it, it's, it's not where you sit and worry about artistic merit. You know, it, it, this is one where you know they won the game. They won it in a stunning style. Um, you have to wonder about the emotional response that the Predators have after losing a game in twelve seconds. That's going to be a test too. Uh, so I, I didn't have any issue with with yeah. in any way the forwards played at that point, really. Yep. Yeah. No, I uh, hear you. Pedersen and uh, Paul Glanner weren't great, and uh, the Giuseppe on the fourth line uh, took a bad penalty. Anyways, um, there's room for improvement, as Talkett has talked about, but by the same token, you're quite right about style points. Artistic points don't matter here. In the no, although it, it's All tough to matters. steal games, too. I mean, I, I, thought, I still thought the Canucks – it's not like the, uh, the Canucks stole that game. I, I thought no. they were a, a, at a full value for the win ultimately, and you know they you, you look again back to last night. The Islanders have that three nothing lead, but they were being played under the table by the Hurricanes, who just couldn't get on the goal, get on the board with the goal, and then eventually, in the third, finally the Hurricanes break through. So it's it's also just hard to to steal games when everybody's intensity is at the maximum. I mean, the Islanders had no business winning that game, and and ultimately, you know, on the judges' cards, the Canucks deserve to win their game too. Sure. Exactly. By the yeah. way, last night when you shot attempts, you see the shot attempts in Raleigh? It's ridiculous. 110, 110 to 28. I've never seen a Corsi 4 disparity of 80 to 20 for a game. It was wow. unbelievable. Like you're, it, it, you're not supposed to win games with 12 shots on goal. No. The Islanders had 12 yeah. shots on goal. Yeah. It, it's, it's ludicrous. I, I heard somebody this morning uh, opine that maybe Varlamov was hurt. Varlamov's not hurt. He's exhausted. He's exhausted. That's what happens. And that's what the playoffs are all about. That's survival, man. It's good times. Good times had by all. By the way, I, uh, I, 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 the towel ain't 82. Here's my latest idea for the Canucks. You ready? Oh, sure. Last week, Tockett said in a couple of interviews, he said, embrace the pain. I can see a T-shirt with Tockett's face and Canucks Stanley Cup playoffs and giant font that says "Embrace the pain." I, I yeah, think it's got. I think it's, I think there's something there. You guys, the guys that did the hats, I think we could do with the "Embrace the Pain" T-shirts. What do you we're think? Gonna, uh, we're going to send that right away to our merchandising people, John. I think it's uh, at, because for round two. I mean, yeah, the, the, the face suggests it's been through some pain. Yes, right. Yes, embrace the pain, boys. Mm-hmm. By the uh, way, I sent that to the Canucks. They thought it was a brilliant idea, too. So let's see who's got it first, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a race. It's a race to the T-shirt. John, marvelous stuff. Thank you for this. Enjoy game two. We'll catch up next week. I will certainly enjoy game two, as I will in Winnipeg as well. British Columbia, you got chills on Sunday. Love Chill. it. Emotional. Thanks, John. Hey, everybody. If you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow along with Secure Some Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. They call it, the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.